On uh, Deputy Catherine Connolly. Ramil Magath, Jan Corla, August um, uh, Minister, I welcome the opportunity. I've waited quite some time for an opportunity to talk. And I must say, your comments in relation to ideology on the left is not helpful. And your comments about historical TDs on this side of the room is not very conducive either to a reasonable debate. Now, I happen to come from a large family and I've had broad experience within that family. We've had many trades, we've had every side actually in relation to jobs and my father was a small builder. Indeed, I watched him all my life working extremely hard, putting in hours when he priced jobs and never got a penny and so on. So I fully understand the situation from a number of different perspectives. And your comments are not helpful. And Deputy Cowan today talked about housing coming up at different uh, elections or the last election. I, I, if, since 2011, every February I've stood in an election. And in 2011, in 2016, and in 2020, it consistently the same messages came up. Housing, public health, climate change, and public childcare. There were other issues, but they were the major four issues. And it seems to me that they're all intermingled if we're going to have a sustainable society. Now, since then, and after those three elections, we've had the pandemic. And we've had the mantra in here repeatedly that we cannot go back. We simply go, can't go back to the way things were. And that's exactly what you're doing with this bill. Now, maybe I'm wrong, and I'll be the first to put my hand up if I'm wrong, and maybe there'll be appropriate changes to the bill, but I have the most serious concerns about what this bill is doing. And we're certainly not learning from the pandemic that we need a sustainable society. And that must be built on principles of equality. And the most basic part of that is that we would have homes be you rent that home or you buy that home, but you're able to do it at a price that's affordable related to your income, not related to the market. I stand here and I come from, I, I live in the Cladda, it's, it's a beautiful place, and I saw a house recently for rent, a two-bedroomed house, €2,000 a month. Now, to me, that's simply un simply unsustainable, and I don't mean to single out any particular house. I'm using it as an example of a two-bedroomed house in Galway City at €2,000 per month. How could that be sustainable? And my difficulty, of course, is that successive governments, and it started with Labour and Fine Gael, I'm afraid, when they brought in the housing assistance payment in 2014 and enshrined it as the, only, the, the, the major government policy. People were taken off a housing waiting list if they received HAP. And it enshrined in policy that a tenant will pay over the... Up to then, they were paying under the counter payments. Now they have to pay over the counter payments because the government or the local authority will pay so much, it does, nobody can get a house under those limits and then they have to pay over. So on every level, with every scheme that successive governments have brought in, it is for the bolstering of the market. That's my difficulty. My, there is a role for the market. And I've heard various TDs talk about, we need developers, and we certainly do, and we need builders, and we need small builders, and I'm all for that. But that's not what this is about. So let me just put it in perspective. I've given one specific example of a rent, a rent of 2,000. And then we have the Simon community, and this is their 18th snapshot. Locked out of the market, the gap between HAP limits and market rents. And if we look at the... I'm going to come to Galway City and... Yeah, here it is. Galway City summary. There were an average of 62 properties available to rent in Galway City over the study period. For the fifth study period in a row, there was no properties available within the standard of discretionary HAP limits in Galway City. This is the 11th time over the 16 locked out studies that there have been no properties to rent within standard HAP limits in Galway. And I could go on, but I won't. And according to DAFT, .ie, rents in Galway have increased 4.9% and so on. And it goes on to the city suburbs, slightly better, but just marginally, 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 and I'm tired. There were three 
uh, over 61 properties, there were just three available within the discretionary. Now, that's a report, and I have read each report that came out, and with each report, the crisis intensifies. And so, three elections I've mentioned, and the consistent message. And so, what I would ask for is a message from the government that the market will not provide sustainable homes for our people. It simply won't. It's there for profit and fair play to them. I fair play to anyone that can make a profit. But that profit must be, must be made within a policy set by a government that says a house is not a commodity to be traded. It is the most essential building block if we're going to have any civilised society. And that message is not coming from me, Minister. The opposite, there's a mixed number of messages which is very, very confusing. Now, we have asked repeatedly on this side of the House for a declaration that there's a housing emergency. We did that with climate change. That hasn't happened. We've asked for housing and homes to be enshrined, a home as a basic, the most basic thing in our constitution. That hasn't happened. And what has happened is we've utterly relied on the market getting worse and worse. The HAP payments are over a billion. Every time I mention that, some minister shakes their head, but I'm going to keep mentioning it until such time as you come back and tell me I'm wrong. So we, have, we had the rent supplement and we still have it, which is nothing wrong with the rent supplement, but it was a temporary measure. And instead then of building houses and dealing with the situation, we did the opposite. And we enshrined the HAP payment as a policy document, unfortunately brought in by Labour and Fine Gael. And that sent a strong message to the market. What we're going to do from now on is allow the market to house people in, with tenure that was insecure and we're going to pay the rents. And the, when we don't uh, succeed in paying sufficient to the landlord, we'll put that bonus on the tenant as well to come up with the cash. Now, I looked at your, I have looked at your bill. 78 sections, 10 parts and two schedules. I've looked at it so many times as I waited for my chance to speak. And the problem is set out, as I see it, in the uh, beginning. It's an act to regulate relevant public land in order to increase the amount of land available, which is nothing wrong with that, if we were doing that, to increase the amount of land available for public housing on public land. And I might come back to that word, public housing. But we're doing it for the provision of housing so as to address deficiencies in the housing market. So we're not recognising this a crisis. We're not recognising that we need dramatic changes, Minister. You know that if we're going to face the next pandemic, if we're going to face climate change, we need to have a sustainable uh, uh, approach in relation to housing. So what this bill is doing is really twisting language to say we are going to look at public land, but you're leaving so many escape routes that that public land will be used for private housing that will be sold off, for private housing that will be rented with no guarantee at all in relation to who will own it and so on. There are so many questions. If you come back to tell me that public housing in Galway, and I, I'm not parochial, I would ask wherever it is necessary, per, public housing and public land, I would be the first to support you. But that's not the message you're given here. Now, a lot of TDs have mentioned the undermining of local democracy, and you have shaken your head and said that's not happening. That is exactly what is happening in relation to the disposal of public land. And 56, you, it's enshrined in it, section 56, that I won't read it out, but it's enshrining that the councillors will not have a say in the disposal of public land to the Land Development Agency. Now, I would have thought the very least before you would put the Land Development Agency on a statutory footing, you might look at what it has achieved today, what it has cost today. They were to look at a registry, what progress have they made in relation to the registry of public land? What is it costing us in rent to have another Quango, a CEO? And all of the time we're running down our local authorities. The CEO, well, you're shaking your head, the CEO from the County Council has moved on to greater things in Mayo. He was acting, I think, for five years, maybe longer. So we have left the County Council without a manager after somebody acting for five years. We have a city manager who's there longer than the seven years. And the, and 
the only idea that the previous government came up with was to amalgamate the two local authorities against the overwhelming decision of the councillors, against the overwhelming decision of them to say, don't do this, bigger is not better, smaller is better, well-resourced, well-staffed, and we'll deliver. And indeed, the a, a report, there were two, uh, two reports at the time, and they went in favour of the amalgamation, but not before the under-resourcing and the understaffing was dealt with. That has never been dealt with. Now, in addition to taking the power from the, from, from the councillors, you were also now setting up a quango in relation to an, a, a land development agency. I'll stick with Galway because perhaps it, it best captures I haven't tired highlighting that there's a crisis in Galway. That we'll just take one aspect of that crisis. I, I've mentioned not enough properties for rent, certainly not enough properties within the HAP, within the HAP um, targets or objectives. But on top of that, we've people waiting 15, 16 and 17 years on a local authority list. Now, I, my regular email to the county council and the city council is, can you please explain to me how they were never offered a house in that length of time? That's one aspect. The second aspect I watched with my own eyes and heard from 2009, all construction was suspended in Galway and other areas. So we had lovely quarterly reports and the final category, housing suspended. We had bought land at a very high price. We had programs for building social housing, all suspended. No house was built. So what I'm saying is, on the one hand, the government stopped any construction of housing, and then on this hand, gave out money under the HAP scheme to bolster the market. And now we find the market can provide something we knew all of the time. When, we, when I look at this, I see it, and I want to thank Dr. Rory Ahern for his many, many articles on housing and his analysis. It's been very helpful to me and other TDs. And he talks about looking at housing through the prism of the market, through the prism of commodity to be traded for something to, for, for profit. Now, if you call me an ideologue because of that, I, I'll take that. I don't think I'm an ideologue. I don't think I have any ideology in relation to that, except that I believe fundamentally in equality. I believe it's right, and I believe it's also right for society because it makes for a healthy society and a more, and a more sustainable economy. Now, I see no equality here. I see snobbery built into your comments, and not your comments, but the bill itself, where we talk about undue social uh, undue. We can't have um, too many tenants of the same type in the same area. I've lived long enough to watch the local authority estate that I come from, Shantala. The houses haven't changed. It has the same appearance, and yet the houses have gone up to a half a million. Doesn't that tell you something about perception and inbuilt snobbery? That a house that was uh, a local authority house, and many of them still are, are now worth a half a million. The railings outside the hospital is exactly the same, same colour, exactly the same type of road structure, the same houses, but it has gone up. So I am really allergic to the inbuilt snobbery when I see undue segregation. Personally, I wouldn't like to live beside any of the men who have um, been caught up, to put it mildly, with the Davy with the Davies scandal and the stockbrokers. I certainly wouldn't like to live beside a bank manager of the few that have been uh, exposed. Uh, you know, segregation works a lot of ways, the comment. So I'll go back to basics and stay away from the emotion, but it really gets to me when I hear that. I would like to see a massive housing construction program of public housing that's available for all of us, if that's what we choose. And you're sending a message then that brings the prices of houses down. The price of my house has to come down whether I like it or not. It is simply not sustainable for house prices to keep going up as if it's a commodity. And if that message goes out, then prices will come down. And then we can look at building public housing on public land. In Galway City, we have no master plan. 
I've tried to explain this and I've extra time here today, so I'll dwell on it. We have actually no master plan in Galway to manage our overall land in the city. We have Kent Station, CIE doing their own thing. We have the docks doing its own thing. We have the Land Development Agency with the City Council looking at Dyke Road. And on all of these areas that I mention, we have substantial public lands. The Land Development Agency has been involved in Galway with no report. A task force was set up, and you might recall it took me quite some effort to get some correspondence from your department in relation. Well, you, when you shake your head, and I waste my time coming back at you, but you might in your own time look at how long it took to get these three letters, and none of them contain a report showing an analysis of the situation in Galway and what's required. They referred to attachments, none of which were given. And the point about setting up a task force is that, in my opinion, I kind of breathed a sigh of relief foolishly at the time and thought, here we're going to look at what's wrong in Galway. We're going to get a master plan for all the public land. And we didn't get it. Then we have infrastructure deficits, both in Connemara, in the smaller towns, and in Galway itself on the east. This has been mentioned by Deputy Canny and by, by the Senator lately in the Shannad. And so we can't have balanced development whatsoever because there's a lack of infrastructure. In relation to that infrastructure, we have a shortage of drinking water in Canthor Nanilon in Connemara because of an absence of, of progress with Irish water. And now we use Irish water as the punching, as the punching bag as opposed to the state setting what's required and insisting that Irish water do it. We have raw sewage, a gollis jot in San Ariga, Tivamut in Kararua, agus gan in chorus achursal i an sin. We have no infrastructure year after year. There are many other things I could mention, but I won't single out the areas. What I'm singling out is the absolute lack of commitment to balanced regional development and an overdevelopment of cities which can't even cope with what they have. We have Mutton Island struggling to cope with the population we have in Galway. We have no sewage infrastructure on the east side of the city. And yet, we're now coming in with a land development agency, a CEO, rent, extra staff, while we have systematically undermined our local authorities. We have denuded them of staff and we've denuded them of power. We took away the um, waste management when we produced a plan in 2001 in Galway to say, look, we don't want an incinerator, but here's our plan. We were extremely positive. The response of the government was, we're taking the powers from you. Now you're taking the powers in relation to housing without an analysis of what's required. And I'll give you an example of, 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 of that um, in relation to um, the strategic housing developments. And a very, very courageous, a very, very courageous um, submission in relation to the review of the Strategic Housing Commission by a planner, a chief planner in Galway. And she sets her out, and Minister, if you do nothing else, I'd ask you to read that, because that person, the July the 24th, 2019, certainly took their courage in their hands. And they actually, and set out that the strategic housing development was not appropriate, that it used up the resources and the time of the staff in the, in the city council, and presumably all the local authorities, to no avail, without any recognition whatsoever. And let me just read one little tiny bit of it in relation to the meetings with an applicant and on board Planola are more dictate than dialogue or negotiation. Trust was a problem, uh, as included the use of additional staff time meetings and resources. It's a long one and my time is nearly up so I can't, I can't uh, go into it. But I invite you to read that. I also ask you to give me whatever analysis was done by the task force in Galway. I have three letters. I have no attachments. I have no conclusions by them after over two years sitting as a task force in a city that is crying out for a master plan. Finally, and this worries me, 
The docks in Galway is under a company uh, and Kent Station is separate. Will those lands be available for the Land Development Agency to look at? Are they outside of the remit because the um, docks has a commercial remit? Thank you. I won't go over my time, King.